Hey YouTube, today I'm going to give you a quick video tutorial on how you can solve your squeaky drive belt issue on your 2007 through 2011 Acura MDX, 2007 and 2008 Acura TL, as well as your 2010 through 2011 Acura ZDX. There was actually a Honda service bulletin issued fairly recently um, in the last few years here. Service bulletin 10-035 indicating that the drive belt squeaks and is definitely uh, more noticeable during cold weather startup. So we're going to show you how to fix this problem on your own uh, for just a few dollars as well as uh, to explain to you where to source the replacement drive belt assembly and not have to pay dealership prices. Prior to starting any type of work, ensure that you have a set of approved jack stands as well as blocking the rear wheels and applying the vehicle parking brakes securely. We'll begin the repair procedure by raising the passenger side of the vehicle using the Honda approved jacking points. To gain access to the fan shroud, we must remove the vehicle's lower splash guard from the engine bay. Step 2 requires us to remove the upper radiator shroud assembly located here and can be done so by removing out the appropriate pop rivets located here, 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 and here. Now this particular vehicle is a 2008 TL. For the MDX and the ZDX, the procedure is very similar. Once the lower engine cover has been removed and the upper radiator shroud has been removed from the top. We will need to now remove the engine coolant reservoir and this can be done by removing the top cover off the reservoir and undoing the single 10 millimeter retaining bolt located in this region here. Once the bolt has been undone, lift the reservoir directly off of the retaining bracket assembly. Careful as there is coolant within the reservoir. Next, disconnect the AC condenser fan 2-pin connector located here. Undo the two 10mm retaining screws holding the AC condenser fan to the radiator assembly. Once you remove the two upper radiator fan shroud mounting bolts, go under the vehicle and remove the single shroud mount bolt located directly in the center point of the lower fan assembly. Before lifting the fan shroud assembly completely out of the engine bay, take note that on the passenger side of the AC condenser fan assembly that there is actually a wiring harness clip that needs to be pinched together with a pair of pliers or equivalent tool to remove it and release it from the bracket assembly. Here's a service tip guys, if you're having trouble getting that clip undone off of the passenger side of the AC condenser fan shroud assembly, you can always remove the cover assembly located here where the serpentine belt is, as well as undoing the fan control relay assembly located right here. And that will give you a couple of inches of extra clearance room to get your needle nose pliers to remove that pesky clip. Lift the fan out of the engine bay. These are the two clips that attach the fan assembly located here for the upper portion of the shroud. And this little hidden pesky compressor clutch activation uh, wiring harness that slides onto a tab that's on that lower AC condenser fan assembly. The next step is to remove the serpentine drive belt assembly, but prior to removal, pay close attention to the routing of the belt prior to removal and using your 14mm socket and a slim serpentine belt removal tool or wrench or ratchet equivalent, move the tensioner towards the firewall of the vehicle to undo the belt assembly. You need to work slowly as some of these tensioners do take a little bit of pressure to release the tension. To solve the belt squealing issue, we need to replace this key component that was actually designed incorrectly originally from the factory. Um, it's a Honda compressor mounting bolt, part number 90023R70A00. And essentially, these are the long mounting bolts that hold the compressor to the compressor assembly. And in a nutshell, the difference between the new bolt versus the old bolt is that the circumference or the diameter of the actual mounting shaft is actually a little bit wider um, to fit in the compressor's mounting bores a little bit better than the old revised or the old bolt design. Bolts are about a dollar a piece if that uh, from your local Honda Canada dealership. Um, the other component that needs to be replaced as well is the serpentine belt assembly um, because they need to be replaced as a unit. However on this particular vehicle we've already replaced the belt prior to with a new revised belt um, so depending if you're still running the OEM factory belt uh, you may or may not need to replace it. Now guys, just for clarity, depending on the type of vehicle you own, whether it's an MDX, ZDX, or a TL, you may need to replace three or potentially four bolts. 
on this specific vehicle, it's a 2008 TL. So we actually, in fact, just so that you can see a little bit better, need to replace the two lower bolts and the bolt innermost to the pulley assembly. The one bolt here by the AC uh, line located in this region does not need to be replaced. From below the vehicle, begin loosening, but do not completely remove the AC compressor mounting bolts. The socket size that you will need is a standard 12 millimeter socket. The bolts can be quite tight retaining the compressor to the engine block assembly and you don't want to strip the heads otherwise you may have extreme difficulty removing the bolts. As a service tip, you may want to potentially use a short piece of pipe on the end of your ratchet to help give you a little bit more leverage. Okay guys, so depending on the type of vehicle you're working on, in a nutshell, we don't ever actually remove all the bolts, we only loosen them first. On this TL we only have to replace three out of the four bolts. Um, this is the first bolt that we actually removed. Uh, I want to make it very clear that you only replace these bolts in a sequential manner. Don't unbolt them all, otherwise your compressor will literally fall out of your car. But here's the old bolt, and this is the new bolt. And as you can tell, the shank thickness is dramatically thicker on the revised bolt than it is on the thin bolt. And this bolt will actually fit into the bores cut out in the compressor to hold it to prevent it from moving around as such. Whereas this thinner bolt has a lot more play in the center and therefore allows the compressor to go off axis causing the belts to squeal. Okay guys, prior to reinstalling any type of bolts that contact metal to metal, we want to make sure that we thoroughly coat any threads with an anti-seize compound. The product I'm using here is made by Permatex. Apply liberal amounts of anti-seize compound onto your threads. Now I had mentioned earlier in the video that we want to go ahead and replace one bolt at a time um, and I do warn everyone watching this video that you really literally need to replace one bolt at a time. If you're having trouble fitting the bolt and screwing it back into the threads, you may need to actually loosen up the other bolts a bit more and wiggle that compressor around as you have to remember that the shank or the shaft thickness of those revised bolts are thicker and you may have some clearance issues. When we're tightening the compressor back to the vehicle, we want to make sure that we uh, tighten these bolts down to about 16 foot-pounds or just simply hand tight uh, in a crisscross manner. Once the four compressor bolts have been torqued down evenly, reinstall the serpentine belt assembly. As a service tip, make sure that you follow the grooves of the pulleys and making sure that your belt is properly aligned prior to starting the engine. Reinstall the AC condenser fan, paying attention that you attach any clips that were removed earlier from the fan shroud. Re-tighten or reinstall all the different components and screws originally removed from the vehicle during the compressor bolt replacement process. Prior to reinstalling the lower and upper engine covers, double check to make sure your belts are routed properly and all your wires are connected and that nothing has left uncomplete. Start the car to verify that the sound has disappeared. conditioning system to verify that there is no AC belt screw. Verify that the AC condenser and radiator fans activate when the air conditioning is turned on. If all checks out, then all is good and you can shut the vehicle off and reinstall the engine covers. 